Welcome to this video. Usually you'll see me cranking it somewhere, trying to find some weird and wonderful places on the inland waterways network. But today we're going to be jumping back two years to when I first bought the boat. Um, actually a bit before then because I had so much work I needed doing to it, including overplating the hull, uh, getting it blacked and dealing with floods that uh, meant I couldn't actually get to it. So let's just jump in here and you'll see this is October the 31st, 2014. That's when I first saw the boat uh, at Mill Island Moorings where it was moored. So you'll notice the paint job is looking pretty good. Uh, <laughs> that's the first thing you'll notice. And also the sides are painted black. So where I've got Naughty Lass written, it's actually just been painted over, I think, in bitumen um, to just have an extra, extra layer of protection, I guess. So it just carried on from the hull up to the gunnels. And then my first look at the batteries and the engine. I'd seen quite a few boats by then, so I kind of knew what I was looking at. But I hadn't seen a lister yet, and I liked the way it sounded. And there's the bed. See, the red curtains are obviously originals, but the carpets you'll see in a minute. That's the cupboard, the wardrobe, not much space. And it was all sort of chock a block with all kinds of bits there. Oh, that's the generator I was just moving out of the way. Generator was a great, that was, came, that was, uh, went with the boat, it was brilliant. Here's the bathroom, just having a little look. Um, hasn't changed much, I mean I've not changed the tiles at all. I've gotten rid of the carpets because I just thought that was, that was gross, get rid of the carpets. And it opens up, so I was just testing the doors, sort of double door system. So it is quite good actually, good feature. Closing the doors. Got the hatch. Seeing my mum. Hi, mum. Oh. <laughs> I think mum, as soon as, as soon as she saw me on the boat, she just thought, yeah. Because I think before she didn't, because I'd have had experience of living on a boat before, uh, three months in London, um, thanks to my friend Sam. If you're watching, Sam, this is your fault. All this is your fault. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think as soon as my mum saw me actually um, on the on the boat having a look around, she was, she just knew that it was going to be a good idea. Here's the kitchen oven, and then opposite the oven is the boiler, combi boiler, supplied by a 300 watt inverter. Lovely cushions. That one remained, but the rest of them I got rid of. And then this is the stove. I was really impressed by that cop that uh, brass kettle as well. It is it had a very traditional feel. And then looking back along the boat there, and then this is just testing the engine. And that little yelp that you might have heard is actually my mum's dog Meg, <laughs> who's I think at that stage only about maybe a year year or two old and she just thought that was a giant, some kind of giant monster. So she was a bit sort of wary of it. <laughs> but since she's been on board since and she absolutely loves it. Here's the stern and that was covered in some kind of rubber sort of non-slip matte coating. I've got rid of all that so I just, I just thought it looked stupid. And there's me checking the engine out which is a Lister ST2 air-cooled. Um, it's got 13 and a half horsepower um, I think it's about 1800 cc, something like that. And here is just the engine bay, really. I've still kept those carpets, so <laughs> I think they're just, you know, I'm going to wear them out. Back through the bedroom. And this is where I noticed there was a bucket. I thought that's handy, there's a bucket on the bed. And later on, I realised it was to catch a drip that had, was just coming through from the roof. But I've fixed all that now. I honestly, I just fell in love with this thing. Um, unfortunately, I had to wait. So that's, we're talking, this is Halloween 2014. Um, I wanted it to go for a, uh, get the, the hull checked, um, get a survey, which obviously you must do with, with any kind of boat. Um, and unfortunately, 
they took one look at it, well they got it out of the water and there was a hole in the water tank and the only thing that was keeping the water in there <laughs> was like just the, the pressure of the, the, the river below it. So uh, yeah, a whole overplating needed to be done. And so I got the broker, he was only one free to, to go along and see it. I, I couldn't get there while on the weekend they were doing it, I was just busy. But here we are, they, they've, they've put three coats of bitumen on it. I mean, to me, that doesn't even look like one, but well, I'm not going to poo-poo someone else's work when I wasn't there to do it, so, you know, and it still is held up today, so, uh, but I will be looking at uh, blacking the boat again fairly soon, whenever I can get it booked in. So if you are a boat builders or a boat yard and you want me to come along and uh, black my boat in your yard, then, you know, let me know. Here's the propeller and the new, I think, Mm, they don't look like new anodes, do they? But I think they were. And um, yeah, you can just see that ridge where that's been welded on. But it's all good. So that, that overplating means there's another 20 years life on, well, at least the bottom of the boat. Um, it's just the sides that I've got to worry about now. But yep, yeah, all in all, I saw that and I was I was happy. We we're getting somewhere. So we leave. Let's leave our LL boats and get back on on board. And this is me signing my life away. Twenty four grand, which is a good deal considering the extra work that went on. And that's me realizing that I've probably made a mistake in terms of me being too tall for certain areas. And then just get to it. Carpets, rip them straight out. That was the first job. Second job was to um, start sanding away and getting the, that varnish off. Uh, and so I made a little bit of a mess for that. And uh, But it's okay because I've got my mate Luke along. My best buddy Luke from school. Um, we've stayed friends f ever since then. And uh, I managed to rope him in to help me on this. Uh, he gave up some of his time. We spent three weeks off and, off and on um, sanding away. It was hard work. I had a belt sander and, and this other sort of um, other sander that I had. But yeah, we made a mess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, actually, without Luke, I don't think I would have got anything done. I would have just sat there just staring at the floor. There's a face on the doors. And this is the view from the kitchen to the towards the bow. That was just taking off some of the horrible paint that was on the, on this cheap wood, because I don't care, you know, what kind of material it is. You can always make it look better with a with a nice coat of paint, which I'll talk about in a sec. That's the brass flue. That was hard to get to that bit. Sanding that bit was really hard. We took away a lot of the brass fittings to try and get closer to this obviously what you'd have to do. And uh, this is the floor with gravel underneath. So there's actually gravel as ballast for, for most the most part of the boat. It's not ideal. Um, you should always go for something that's easier to put in and out in case you get a leak. It looks so weird, I can't believe it's it's such a long time it feels like but yeah this is after I, I, I like to keep sort of a, the work site clean so a lot of vacuuming went on but um, here's the uh, some of the furniture that I took out and I saw I took that home as something to me to do so I don't have to travel the 45 minute journey that I would have had to travel to get to the marina uh, so I just yeah just started um, using the old Annie Sloan's Chalk and a bit of Rust-Oleum chalk paint as well, just playing around really, um, getting excited about my new home. I've never owned a home before, absolutely over the moon. So yeah, and here's more chalk paint on the bathroom walls. And inside we've got some more cleaning up basically, really getting all that. It just took so long to get that varnish off, it was absolutely ridiculous. I'm glad I didn't know that I was uh, 
going to have to do all this because I would not have wanted to do it. <laughs> this is the most important part of the boat is obviously the, the beer fridge. Uh, so we've got uh, we've got two two inspection hatches really, which have come in handy since. Some more chalk paint. Uh, so that's the first layer. I just put a green down and then I followed it up with a, a teal that you'll see in a bit and to get like a nice Moroccan style feel. And I went a bit crazy and dyed all the curtains with uh, Annie Sloan's, oh, I think it was called Napoleon Blue paint. It's a little bit purple for my liking. So it was, wasn't, wasn't all good. And here's my uh, mate Alex who he just breezed in. He's, a, he's basically Alex. Uh, he doesn't. This is MD, MDF. He's working with, which he's absolutely fine with. But he's, his skill is actually with green wood and sort of old-fashioned sort of big timber frames um, and really impressive structures. Actually, I'll put his link, Alex's and Luke's links, down in the, in the video below because those guys are both absolute geniuses. What they can, what they do. So, so we've got these MDF sheets in, and they uh, tongue and groove style. Um, so they just look like you've 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 actually installed tongue and groove going down. It's you know because it's quite a fashionable look, and I was thinking, yeah, I really want to make this place look um, different to how it was, um, and this was the way forward. And we just slapped that right over the cork. We didn't add any any more insulation. Um, looking back, I don't know if I would have would add any more insulation because you know it's more the the top half that I probably would have liked to have added to. But yeah, a quick coat of primer, and then I was ready to um, put some more Annie Sloan's on it. I love that stuff. It cost me a fortune, though. That's me and Dad. Uh, Dad helped me put the flooring in, which you'll see in a bit in a minute. My naughty lass life ring there. That's the boat without solar panels. Uh, and this is Mitch. Um, basically, I went onto Facebook uh, for the Kennet and Avon sort of boaters group, and I asked everyone who can you recommend? And they said, well, this guy. And um, so I got him along and um, I gave him a grand to spend on the various bits. Because um, I said, oh, you know, here's, here's a thousand pounds. What can you get for it? Um, rather than sort of seeing how it went and then paying him afterwards and not knowing what how much budget I'm going to have. So I gave him a budget and he went away and got six, two six volt Trojan batteries, like deep cycle ones, um, top of the range and um, 300 watt solar panels and he rewired so he's got all the LED lighting inside as well um, well certainly at the, the front part of the boat at the, in the bedroom I still kept the halogen bulbs because um, we didn't have quite enough money to, to get that done as well and he, and he came in and did it all in a couple of days so I was, I was very impressed and you see the fuse box is there and also the MPPT controller, which allows me to control the, the the flow of power from the solar panels into the batteries. I'm not going to try and explain electricity or solar panels because it's all just a a, a bit of a magic to me. But um, hopefully, if you're an expert and you're looking at this, you you can see what I what I've got here. And and if you're just a beginner and you have no idea, then I can't help you. <laughs> The most I had to do was actually fit the LED lights in to two of the wires that were left over. This is the outside where the wires went in, so we drilled through the the metal there to um to get from the top to the to the batteries. And then this is the naming ceremony. Basically, Alex and Luke and uh, another guy called Phil uh, was there, and we. I screwed on the, the, the new name plaque. I painted over the word Jacob, because that's what he used to be called. And um, yeah, Naughty Lass was born. Sort of, sort of some kind of narrowboat sex change. <laughs> but uh, we didn't lift the boat out of the water. We just sort of poured a little bit of drink into the, uh, to the drink. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not superstitious, really. So not only bad luck since, touch wood. Here we see my dad um, painting away. It's actually put, I think he's actually putting a coat of varnish. And that's how we got it. Uh, how you protect the chalk paint? Otherwise, splashes of water on that stuff, and it just runs down, runs off. Really, that's why you always use wax or varnish. Now, on these floorboards, after we'd fitted them, this is French oak that we bought locally, and it's me testing the the height, headroom. 
<laughs> it's only just. Oh dear. Uh, and uh, yeah, the the coating we put on this, that I put on this, was the hard wax oil, um, which is sort of specialist stuff, but yeah, really worth worth doing. And I basically just got a tester pot. I think I got away with a couple of tester pots. So it's really coming together by now. And um, I didn't paint those doors on the left. I just left them on the eye. I just sanded it back a bit to make it look a bit more, more vintagey. And uh, so I've also, you'll also see now there is a bit of a, 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 sh a shine to the, the, the wood at the top of the the room, and that is the Danish oil going on. Started with a mixture. I think it was 50-50 Danish oil and. Um, white spirit, uh, and then a little bit more, so it was like 70 30 Danish oil to white spirit, and then all Danish oil just so it's soaked in a bit. And you can just see it's, it makes a nice, sort of really inviting glow rather than that sort of harsh varnish. And then, yeah, I just couldn't wait to move in, so I just started moving the little bits in and testing it out, see if I could actually work there, you know, with the batteries supply, supply me enough power. And um, I did think, ah, oh, there's no way I'd like to live on board and and also do it at the same time. I just thought that was that would not be a good thing to do because you'd just be constantly moving stuff from one end to the other. But yeah, at this point I I tested it out. I had my first night on board. I really enjoyed that, and it just felt right. I just thought, yeah, this is it. It's starting to come together. Really exciting. And I hadn't even painted the walls yet. <laughs> uh, but one of the, the essential things I got was a, this sort of silk pocket sprung mattress. Uh, absolutely. Mm. And um, yeah, so we're pretty much in there now. And that's it. That's all I did up to that point. I've done a lot of other different things since. Um, well, I put in a, a black and white checkered um, floor there, just tiles from home base, real cheap sort of, you fit each tile on, and um, yeah, so there's not much else to show there um, without skipping forward um, a few months. I hope you enjoyed that, I hope that was a little bit of an insight to um, uh, what it's like to, to do up a boat, um, not so much fit it out, but at least um, make it your own. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!